ITR boxing. You heard it here first. Pretty cool videos. And I heard they're also in HD. ITRboxing.com. Understood. And I see exactly what, and I, I agree with you exactly. Uh, Loma needs to drop back down. That was one of my concerns before this fight is no matter how skilled and technical he was, you know, when you've got 400 amateur fights, he, he's fought some legit people coming up to the pros. But if you noticed, I believe it's in, you include the last one, it's his last four fights, every one of them he's got injured. And I believe the body is breaking down. I need, he, he think he, I think he needs to drop back down to 126 and see if he can regain any momentum there. Otherwise, I, I really don't know how much longer Loma's body is going to hold up. Well, I told someone about a year and a half ago, he only had two years left in the sport, and they looked at me like I was crazy. And to me, it's what you're saying is what I've been thinking a long time. The body's just going on him. And I think the reason he's fighting at higher weights is when your body starts to go, it starts to become harder to do things that keeps the weight off. Like, I know this just from getting older. It ain't as easy to run anymore as it used to be. So by very definition, I'm going to be a little bit bigger than I used to be. And then add that my metabolism slowing down. It's not as great as it once was. These are hurdles Lomachenko is facing. And I think that when you look on the internet and you see two things, Shakur Stevenson calling him out and Vasil Lomachenko saying that he was wronged um, by the decision of Teofimo Lopez, D don't get me wrong, but that comes off as an entitlement. He's doing all this goofy boxing training that if he's not winning, we'd probably laugh at, but we call genius because he's winning, right? And then he doesn't throw punches for about six rounds, maybe seven rounds of a fight, one of his biggest pro-defining fights, and then waits a few months to basically just say that his promoter, who's tried their hardest to make him a star the guy won't really talk that much to the media and hasn't really branded himself until recently with the Lomas brand with himself and Usyk it just seems like he never quite got it in terms of media marketing and all of that I think you're exactly right and I think a lot of people I know I did when I first read that article uh, my head started hurting because I was just shaking my head the whole time. You know, he should have just let it go. And I, watching that fight, you're exactly right. One, I do not, after the fourth round, I told friends that I was watching it with, I go, there's something wrong with Loma. There's absolutely something wrong. It was always his style to start slow and, and see what your tendencies are when he would faint, throw a punch, throw a jab, throw a hook. And then he would slowly start, you would see the punch counts go up and he would get stronger, faster, stronger, faster. And that's why he would make people quit on the stool. In the fifth round, it was like he was going backwards. You know, he didn't make a statement until seventh, eighth, ninth rounds, you know, and then Tiafimo Lopez come on strong in the end. To me, even though, you know, even if you throw him some credit for being the champion, I think Lopez just completely destroyed him. He took the fight to him and he did things that nobody else had ever done before. Now, how much of that was how bad the, the, the shoulder was? Because I heard nothing about that until that, that evening when, when his trainer mentioned a shoulder injury that he had had all during great training camp. And he had already had his surgery Monday morning. So they already knew about it and scheduled it. And that made me upset the same way it did with Pacquiao and Mayweather, where Pacquiao was injured during training camp, but he went through with the fight. And then afterwards, it's like, oh, my shoulder. Well, then put off the fight and come back at 100% and give the fans what they want. I, I, I understand them wanting to go through with the fight, but the shoulders are what you need that. I'm sorry. You can't just gloss that over. I, I was upset that uh, he went through at the fight at that point. If it was that bad, should have postponed it. And moved but on. here's the thing I don't like about that. Maybe I'm too close to the sun by knowing Teofimo. I don't like when people discredit Teofimo for this win because 
I always believed in Teofimo, but every people called me up that fight week to laugh at me saying Teofimo what? won't lose, is going to lose. No, because people had a disdain for Teofimo Lopez uh -oh. and his father going into that fight, right? And right. they're actually sweet, nice people, but for some reason they rub people the wrong way on television. If you ever met them, you'd go, I've never met more like friendly uh, people who are consistent in your whole life, right? They, they, they treated me to one of the best dinners of my life and I ate like a Viking. It was wow. one of the best evenings of my life. They, they fed me so much. And then I saw him the next day and we're at a top right car. He goes, Luke, you <laughs> ate like Vikings last night, bro. And then Tio Fimo <laughs> came over and he gave, he, he was walking around. They're good people. And to know who they are, the people they are, the sacrifices Junior has made, the sacrifices Teofimo has made, the sacrifices the whole family has made. And for people to say, well, that wasn't Loma 100%. Teofimo took a major risk and he won. And people need to give the kid credit because I see too many people trying to crap on him, too many people wishing ill will on him. And he did something a lot of these last generation fighters, even generation fighters now, are unwilling to do. He took short money to take a big risk. And, you know, he, the, the injury itself, me, I just like to see teams or individuals go at each other when they're 100%. Loma is a true fighter. He's, he's fought with, you know, uh, broken bones in his hands. You know, he's, he's dealt with that. He's fought with it. So I, I agree. You don't take anything away from Tiafimo on this win because he did something that no other fighter has been able to do. Even when Loma, Loma was injured, he was still able to take it to people, take it to the fighters, you know, except for his one other loss. You know, he was uh, one of the top pound per pound ranked fighters in the world, Teofimo dominated that fight from opening bell. He dictated pace. He dictated control. He dominated him. I picked Lomachenko on this fight. I said after the fact, you know, I got it wrong. I said I was upset with the, the shoulder uh, surge injury. He should have said something about that and waited maybe to fight him when he was 100%. But you can't fall back on that after the fact as an excuse. And I, I don't agree with people dogging any fighter who is in the ring, who has controlled the fight, and he took the belts from Lomachenko. He wasn't giving them. He took them. And the thing about it, too, is um, Loma now is in a weird spot. Mm -hmm. His career, he might be the guy that never really got it as a pro. He might be the greatest amateur, but see those amateur boxers, they never make good pros because he hasn't had a real big fight until the Teofimo Lopez. I know the Reagan Diao fight was big, but he's never had a fight that was like the truly convincing main event marquee fight where it was back and forth, maybe Linares, but Linares had lost so much. It didn't feel as sexy, right? So we look at, he lost to Salido early in his fight, basically off a of sheer arrogance that he wanted to fight a tough guy really early in his career. And then he loses to Teofimo Lopez, who's the younger generation that was supposed to lose to him. Realistically, Shakur Stevenson could beat him within the next year.